Hey, sneak on in here. I got a secret. What they didn't show you on Netflix's barbecue showdown this season. I'm gonna show you, but I'm also gonna be making my beer bread pudding. Hey, if y'all hadn't seen it or hadn't heard of it, another season of Barbecue Showdown is on Netflix. And we were so honored to be on the show. So when we walk out that morning and you look up the road there on this set where this Barbecue Showdown is taking place, there is a big old beer truck up there. They got the tailgate rolled up a little bit where you can sort of see and then they just pop it open. And what's in there? More beer than I ever seen in my life. I mean, the whole town of where I come from could have got drunk, never woke up for a week on all that beer. But I looked at the judges there, but there was one extra guy sitting there. And I'm thinking, I know who that guy is, and I'd like to say howdy to him again. That's Tuffy Stone, a gracious, kind person he is, and a man that knows any kind of cooking. So in this challenge all about beer, you had to have a beer brine for your meat, but also beer had to be in your side dishes or dessert. Today we're talking about, so many people ask, the beer bread pudding. You know, in this challenge, dessert is optional, but hey, I'm going to bring it every time I go out there and cook. I am going to make me a dessert every time I get a chance because it's how you finish a meal. You know, I made a lot of bread pudding. And to me, the secret of bread pudding is what you start with. Now, I've heard of using donuts, bagels, French bread, all kinds of bread. But folks, I usually use hamburger bun when I'm making bread pudding. But they didn't have many of them in there that day. So next thing I found, hot dog bun. Because I'm going to show you something. When you open a hot dog bun, what do you see in here? All them little holes of air, that's going to make lighter, fluffier. You don't want a piece of really dense, hard bread if you're going to make bread pudding. You want it to be light and fluffy. Now, I like to take these about out maybe two hours ahead of time. Just let them get some air and begin to dry out because these are going to soak in the beer. 12 ounces of dark beer. If you got a can opener, use it. If you don't, make sure your wedding ring is really stout. What do you do? Pop the lid off just like that. It's pretty easy. So I'm going to pour a little bit in there. And you can see how dark that beer is. Now, the beer I was using down there that day was a dark beer and a Miller beer. So bite-sized pieces. Chunk them up in here. The reason I'm using a dark beer today and in that challenge, too, is there is a little bitterness in here, but also a little sweetness that's going to go. I think it'll work better than just a light beer. Things happen fast. This is a five hour challenge, but when you're talking about brining meat, usually to me, that's an overnight brine. So we're just gonna brine about two hours and everybody is running back and forth. And from where my station was to where the pantry is, it's like a, a football field long. I had to run every time to get there. And in these boots, hey, you're packing on some extra weight, but I stayed true to my roots, folks. I wasn't about to cook in the kitchen. I'm gonna cook outside. We're going to save this one right here, folks, just in case we need it. But we got all of that tore up in bite-sized pieces. I just want you to pour that beer on top of it. We're going to mix it just a little because this needs to soak for about an hour. Let all that bread get infused with that good beer. You can see how some of that's done soaked up, but when you cook that, you're going to bring that moisture content, some of that out of there, and it's going to puff up a little because what's beer got in it? Let me think. It's got some yeast in it and it takes about, I'd say, 10 to 12 ounces of buns, which is usually like maybe 10 hot dog buns, nine. But that's about the consistency you want when you get this put together. Oh, before I forget, we're going to be at the National Cowboy Museum there in Oklahoma City for the National Day of the Cowboy. Be doing two different little workshops and presentations. Be sure and come by because we'd love to visit with you. But hey, this is like about 15 minutes setting that hour. I got me about three tablespoons of butter sitting right in there, some brown sugar, two cups of heavy cream. Let's get that mixed up a little. It's always windy here. Was it windy there? It never was really windy there. One, one night it got, we got pretty hot during the day, but then that night it got down in like oh, low 30s and you'd be wet from sweating all day and then you get cold chills at night. But uh, I'm glad I had the opportunity to do it. Met some really great people I did. I'd like to give a shout out, especially to a, to a friend of mine that I made down there and I think he is family to me and Shannon. That is Gerald. Say nephew, hope you're doing well, brother. Wish you and your family well. 
got to have a little nutmeg. So just grind you some in there. If you ain't got no grinder or the wind's blowing too hard, get you some out of a shaker. A little shake of cinnamon, a little bit of vanilla. We're gonna give that another stir. The butter and the brown sugar have all incorporated well. We're just gonna let this warm throughout. I don't want it to come to a boil, don't want it to come to a simmer. I just want it to warm to where all them ingredients is just loving on each other. Now, very important thing, and I like to let it go too far. I see, when you watch this, and you're in my station there, there's a big old smoker here, there's a table here, there's a green egg out there I never did use. There's a sort of a rim here with a fire in it, and then there's a Santa Maria grill. And I just tried to get everything to where you don't waste any motion too much. You're just going, you know where everything's at. But folks, it gets pretty hectic to manage a fire in a smoker that you've got meat in now. It's just a lot going on. And you think five hours is a long time? Hey, it's not so bad till you get right down to the end of it and then you think, what happened all the time? Make sure this is not too hot. You just want it to be able to pour them eggs in there so we ain't cooking. And how many eggs? Four of them cackleberries it was. Get it all stirred in there well. Well, been about an hour and you can see things are moistened up pretty good they are. So we're just gonna pour this in there. I can already tell you by the flavor coming out of that. I could the put the flavor coming out of it. The you can tell the flavor. The smell anyway. I would sure enough eat this for breakfast, dinner, and supper. Now you can see this is a little wet. So this one here we'll put, and I may have to get another one to go with it. You don't want this, I would say, soupy, but remember this is a pudding. It's not a cake. Had to have some more we did, so we'll get these in there. Now I've done a lot of food competitions uh, in the last 20 something years. Such a grac gracious crew, the whole bunch was, uh, you know, them cameramen, every time you'd move, there'd be a camera in your face here. You'd run over here and there's a camera and they'd say, could you do this over? And I'd say, you have to give me a minute, buddy. I'm pretty busy, but. How many cameras were at each person? Everybody had at least two on them, probably most of the time. So it was pretty hectic. Uh, they'd get out of the way if they seen you come in, you had an arm full of groceries. Days are really long when you're shooting like that. And um, they always usually start 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. Go through a process of hurry up, wait some time, and then you do an interview, and then you do a little cooking, and then you do some more interviews. And you know, I think the longest day that I might have had down there, we got out there by like 7.45, 8 o'clock, and we get back to the motel at 1.15 in the morning. That's when tired sinks in. When your mind, you just lay back on that bed and you think about all the things that shoulda, coulda, woulda, maybe, and it's hard to go back to sleep. Uh, there was some short nights down there, they was, and long days. You can see that consistency, what I call just about right. And that was one package of hamburger buns plus five more. So really nearly took about two packages, uh, but you don't want it really soupy, but you can see as you pick that up, this is gonna be good. I have greased my little 12 inch Dutch oven. If you're doing this in the house, preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit it's gonna take it about an hour to cook. Now, when you get this in a Dutch oven like this, if you was to put this in a tin, which is a smaller oven than this, you'd be pretty close to the lid time it comes out. This is where you people that know what I'm talking about will get this job done really well. Get that trowel in there and let's smooth that concrete out. We don't want no really rough surfaces. So we're gonna probably use like a half a cup of white sugar. I like to sprinkle it right on top, give it a little more sweetness. Hey, stick with me, we're gonna get this to cooking, but I'm going to reveal to you the biggest thing they didn't show you on Barbecue Showdown. set me a trivet there on the ground and we're using Smoky Woods hardwood lump today we are. Pretty light ring around the outside edge of that trivet set that 12 inch Dutch oven on there. I'd say about a medium base coal on the top. Uh, this hardwood lump is some good oak stuff so it's going to make you some heat. Got a little breeze today we'll have to rotate a little but we'll keep an eye on it. You know what they didn't show you is how I had to cook this. Now when I would run back down there to pantry, and they, I mean, they got the greatest pantry of all, and I'd be looking first thing, cast iron. Look all down them bottom shelves everywhere. I never did see a Dutch oven. 
I seen a lot of pots like this and they had a domed lid. You can't keep coals on a dome lid. I'm not about to cook in one of these stoves. I'm gonna stay out there true to my roots. So I'm thinking, I know you can do this because I've done it before. You put a skillet right there on top. You got coals underneath, coals on top. You can't put no lid lifter on here though. And I mean, I'd get me a pair of gloves and I have coals on here and it's really not putting out the same heat it would be as if you had a, a lid that was really conformed to this. So I'd take me a good old glove and I'd be oh so careful. And what happened every time? A little bit of ash fall in that beer bread pudding, which I think just gives it taste. And I know a lot of you out there is thinking to yourself, why didn't you just turn it over and cook in it like that? Well, you coulda, but how far would you have been down here close to your bread pudding? You'd have burnt the top of it. So this was about the only thing that I could come up with because I never did find a true Dutch oven down there. But I'm a guy who stuff quite often I do, and I like to try to get by with what I got. So it took longer for me to brown the top of this than I've ever cooked anything in a Dutch oven in my life. I could take it off the bottom heat, and I'd have to come over here and get this there once in a while, shake the coals off of it, reach over here while I was checking my meat, get some coals and put back on here and refire this to where we could get the top of that to brown because, hey, we ain't gonna serve them raw beer bread pudding. We're gonna serve them the good stuff. But I think we better check on this before we burn it too. Looks good, and I'm gonna eat it, but I'm gonna let it cool off a minute. And you see me when we was cooking this deal and pulled it up, how it had bubbled up through there. That yeast gives it that rise out of that beer, but you just put your little fingers on it, mash it just a little. It should be spongy. You don't wanna sink down in it, but you don't want it to be so dense that you think, oh, that's like a brick. Put that little chocolate sauce together, it's got that beer in there, let it come to a pretty hard boil for about two minutes, and then what? Drizzle her on there and you're ready to go. Now. I did taste this when I made it down there because I want to make sure. So I'm going to taste it again, and I bet it tastes just like it did when I was there, Mage. Mm. Mm -mm. Maybe we're going to do the showdown shuffle. That's about enough because I'm going to have another bite of that. But first of all, I want to say thank you to Netflix for giving me the opportunity. Thank you for all the people that's working down there and got this to going. Uh, it was a great venture. And I ain't never scared of an adventure that I know of, but most of all, we want to thank y'all for watching because y'all are family to me and Shan and all the pups. You know, there's a lot went on in the last four or five weeks behind us, and we appreciate the prayers and everything that y'all dished out to us. And uh, I still miss that little beagle that would have been sitting right there. But uh, thank y'all so much for supporting our channel, supporting the calls that we did out there for Rio Dosa. It's great, and uh, it is with great pride, honor, and privilege that I tip my hat to that old flag and all the servicemen and women and all the veterans that have kept it flying. Rest of you, come on up in here close. I'm gonna give you a little bitty hug because I'm hungry. God bless you each and every one and I'll see you down the beer bread pudding trail.